I'm talking to Paul Wilkins from TMD. Paul, hello. Hi, Dick. What technology trends are you expecting to see at IBC this year? Uh, I think the all-pervasive one, of course, will be video over IP. But to us, that it's about the trend towards IP workflows, and that really means the cloud. So for us as a media asset management company, a workflow company, it's all about how people are looking to take advantage of what the cloud has to offer them. So the cloud is becoming increasingly important then? Yes, I think, I th I think so. People are looking for the flexibility it, it, it gives, I think. Uh, to us, that's very much about being able to scale up the resources that a facility has. So rather than having to have 10 transcoders on premise because once a year you need all 10 to be working flat out, you can have five on premise, should we say, and then use the workflow engine to intelligently decide when to throw jobs up into the cloud to handle your, your peaks. So it reduces your, your CapEx investment. Media asset management, um, is there still a place for it in today's broadcasting environment or have we moved on? How do you fit in? I, I think it's in, uh, even more important today as people get more and more detached from from the physical nature of their assets. You know, it's fine. We've all seen the transition from videotape when you could touch your video asset. Now it's on a bit of spinning disc, but the spinning disc is in a rack, which is in your rack room. Uh, and tomorrow with the cloud, it's, you don't even know where it is. You know? So being able to handle it, find it, measure it, track it, uh, becomes much, much more important. And, and that, to me, is what we really mean when we talk about media asset management. You also talk about workflow management and service-oriented architectures coming out of that. How does that play into the TMD offering? Um, we offer a, a, a platform which is a service-oriented architecture. You know, it's about having services that, that you use um, and how you communicate and control those services. In, in our terminology, we link those together with, with a workflow. So the service might be, go back to our earlier conversation there, but it might be a transcoder, and that service can be on-premise and it can be in the cloud. You have both services available to you, and the, and the workflow decides whether we do it on-premise or, or in the cloud, depending on what constraints are operating in your operation then and there. You know. One of the issues is that asset management and workflow management can become hugely complex, whereas quite often uh, users want a simple, you know, ready to implement solution. Do you have a, 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 an answer for them? Uh, very much. I, I mean, historically, TMD has been seen as a, a big solution player. Some of our, our customers are big blue chip name customers. And yes, <coughs> excuse me, very complicated uh, workflow solutions. But in, in making our product cloud native, um, we've, we've gone for a sort of re-architecting uh, or re-engineering our architecture to focus more on microservices um, operating in, in containers as such. So it's much, much easier now for us to spin up and spin down within our own applications, smaller services, which means we can scale products down and configure things um, much more tightly than we could have done, say, five years ago. So now we are offering a range of uh, applications that are tailored to specific workflows. So you can buy an application to do dig digitization, ingesting of content, you can buy an application to do post-production, or an application to, to manage an archive. So we can be much more focused, and because of that, we can write a specification and say, at this price, it will do this. Um, so it makes it easier for people to buy into a small level of media asset management, whilst having the comfort that they are sitting on top of a platform which will scale up to a massive enterprise solution with all the complexity that you might want in five years' time. One of the um, advantages we've been told about in service-oriented architectures is that it will give you a clearer idea of what the system is doing, where the bottlenecks are, and what the costs are. Do you have solutions that provide that sort of business-level information? In, indeed. I mean, analytics is, is a big part of, um, of our message at, at IBC this year, and the, and the ability to, to display meaningful information to users uh, in real time so they can see you know, how many jobs are running at the moment, how many jobs are, are queued up, and see where bottlenecks are, and make a decision 
to spin up a new service to add more resource for the next two hours or, so, or, or something like that. You know. And again, it's back to the example of the cloud. You can make a decision to throw some jobs into the cloud and, and pay the premium for that because you need to get them done in the next half hour. So. With the, the video infrastructure moving to IP, does that have a, a, an impact on what you do? Um, not really. Um, we, we've, we're always, we've always been, in, in the digital world, we've always been about files, so the files in an IP in, in environment, you know, we've, we've always had to have a, a process to digitise that content, so we take our SDI feed, we have to encode that and turn it into a file before it, it comes in something in our world. So whether that's coming to us across an IP feed or coming across traditional coax, doesn't make a lot of difference to us. The principles are the same. We, we have a bit of digital media that needs to be tracked. TMD has got a very strong position in the marketplace. It's widely recognized as, as one of the most powerful and flexible solutions. Why do you think that is? What makes you so unique in the marketplace? Um, we, we like to think it's, it stems from our workflow engine. So you know, workflow orchestration is a big part of any, of any media asset management system. We, we took the decision when the product was being developed you know, nearly 20 years ago now, ne next year will be our 20th year, um, to make that very um, intuitive. So we, we didn't go down the path of complicated scripting engines. We, we've developed a drag and drop uh, user interface that allows, you know, I'm going to say unskilled, but, but ordinary people, um, you and I perhaps, um, to build workflows just by dragging um, graphical representations of tasks onto the screen, linking them together and building in the automation, the decision making points that they need in that, in that workflow. So it's very easy to create a workflow, very easy to copy it, to clone it, repurpose it um, without needing to come back to us and pay expensive professional services or have a PhD uh, <laughs> think, employee on site to yeah, do the editing. I, I, I think that's a very important point. That you want the people that understand the workflow and the, the aims of the workflow to be able to create it. Indeed, indeed, absolutely, it's well put. Yeah. I should employ you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, IBC 2017, you'll be there, stand 2.B59. Yes. Um, what else are you expecting to see? What, what, what are you looking forward to most about IBC this year? Uh, I mean, IBC is always a good opportunity to catch up with old friends, of course, and, and to network within the um, Within the, within the industry, um, a beer at the beach always goes down very very well. Um, but we look forward to meeting new customers and, and meeting our existing uh, customers. So for us, it's a big opportunity uh, to broaden our, our reach and get our message across. Terrific! Yeah, very much look forward to seeing you in Amsterdam in September. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Steve.